Um, Creature Feature is a name for the show. I th mostly because like my original artistic making impulses were all trying to make creatures, draw creatures as a young kid. You know, just liking monster movies, liking dinosaurs, anything that crawled and slithered and had claws, you know. That was the stuff I was interested in trying to make my own version of. So this is all still just pulling from that. The material I use is kind of comes from everywhere. Like I'm really not picky about where I can get it, but I am tied to it in specific ways. And I like knowing where material comes from. I like having my own personal connection to it. Uh, denim was maybe the first thing I really fell in love with using denim and canvas and I think that makes sense because denim was what brought me to sewing. I was wanting to patch jeans, you know, embellish them. Um, and uh, thrifting, like thrifting has also been an entry point into just gathering all kinds of materials. Uh, but I also like to be given stuff, so it's, I cast a big net for the material. <laughs> yeah, so I love sourcing for my own wardrobe. Like anytime I can decide that a piece of clothing is done with its clothing life and is ready to be chopped up and turned into art material. I love, you know, taking it to the chopping block. Um, and kind of feel the same way about like my dad's clothes, my mom's clothes, you know, clothes people give me, there's some fun about like ripping into. Um, but yeah, stuff that, stuff that people I loved have, has worn has a real like resonance about it and uh, how it gets used and I often treat it with a bit more intention. I think a lot of the change is just a result of like the last couple of years changing the way I approach making things and how I'm, you know, literally like thinking about what it is um, versus, you know, is it a drawing related thing? Is it a painting? Is it its own construction? You know, what's the nature of the thing I'm trying to make? Uh, I think as I've just tried to, to pull from more places to to put into a piece, the, they get more um, dense or more components to them. I, I think when you come across some garments, some material, there is a direct like, oh, I can use this for this way. You know, this pattern would be a great, you know, arm or a good background, or maybe you could like, you know, hint at being floral or, you know, there's some things have a more specific use, obviously right away. And other stuff I think just tells you what it wants to be as you make it. Um, but I'm pretty, pretty inclined to just see, you know, just try things out, arrange patterns until it looks right, looks alive. Symbolism is super important to me because it's, you know, at this point in art, like a universal thing, like symbols are almost not your own when you use them. And I like that idea when I use stuff that I can be thinking of a, you know, maybe a front of a piece of jeans as a symbol but I don't have my own idea necessarily about what that means. I mean, sure, I've got my own connections to looking at a denim fly and a button and think about all these things, but I like also that anybody could bring a ton to that symbol. And that kind of goes for all the like repurposing of like specifics, uh, parts of clothing, you know, I like that. It's just um, like a ready-made symbol almost, you know, these things that we see every day, it's a nice visual cue, hopefully. I think next to that, like, idea of, you know, using more ambiguous symbols, there's also a, you know, direct desire to give people something to, like, latch on to, you know, like a crab shape or a monster shape or, you know, eyes, mouths, these things that, you know, similar to part of a, you know, they're recognizable very easily. Um, and I think, you know, it's safe to say as I make it that like plenty of people will be able to pick out this eye and, you know, feel some type of way about an eye. Um, but I guess I'm just, again, trying to cast a big net with the symbols. In finding the tone of the, the creature, the piece, it usually comes pretty early, I think, because, you know, the process of making them starts with like finding that spark of life in the, in the arrangement of fabric to begin with. And I think fairly quickly I have an idea of like where this thing wants to go. Is it scary? Is it cute? Is it some weird in between? Is it silly? Um, but, but it does feel a bit like, you know, they've got their, 
identity for themselves and I just get to make it for them, I just make the thing. Um, in cases of, you know, big pieces, there's a pretty direct lineage to like my love of Godzilla and giant monsters and I think just again a desire to make a big scary thing. Um, but now I get to bring my own kind of like young adult view of the world into that in my own way. Like even if I'm just speaking to that to myself in making it, it's a, uh, yeah, just I think trying to ex exercise all these like, you know, little whims we've got. This piece behind me was the first time I ever directly was like, I'm trying to connect to a deity and because I referenced, you know, those kind of famous portraits of Shiva, the dancer. Um, and a big part just because I love the expression in that position of the body, you know, of legs and arms, you know, in these certain ways and how that conveys movement. Um, I guess look, looking for a feeling like a deity in the piece comes back to, you know, trying to find that spark of life and, you know, make some connections between the, the deities and gods that get represented in art and our culture and how those, you know, connect to our own humanity and trying to do that you know, with these pieces as well, somewhat. Um, you know, hoping that they speak to the human and also the ability to be more than human, you know, or subhuman, or whatever, the full spectrum. The little guy, the doll with the background was a very playful piece, trying to think about, you know, camouflage or mimicry and kind of differences between those two or you know, what it's like to, to hide. Um, and the flat background with the 3D object and trying to make those be semi-effectively uh, disguised was just, you know, kind of a, a cute exercise for the doll itself. It was like, it's like, oh, you're a hider. <laughs> it's the identity it took, but he's kind of like, you know, the wide eyes um, give them away. <laughs> you know, a lot of the things, like when, you're, when I'm making art, you know, you like to think about them being interacted with and uh, making some 3D things for the first time, experimenting with that, you know, just holding it myself and being like, wow, you feel very alive, um, was just exciting to then think about all the other ways people could potentially feel that aliveness in their holding and interacting with the object. And also just, you know, when a thing is 3D and then plush, it, I think it gets people even closer to that. Like, I can touch this, I can hold this, I can, this could be for me. And uh, I like that idea.